uh, is American and lives in Oregon, but married Ian, a Scottish man from Paisley. Yay! And, well, hey! <laughs> and uh, Elizabeth is a prophet, uh, a very accurate and gifted prophetic voice, uh, and she uh, has a particular remit amongst the First Nations people, uh, Native Americans. Uh, what is your tribe? Oh, wow, okay. I was gonna try to re-pronounce that, but you're gonna... <laughs> Okay, I'll need to hear it a few more times to get the name. So, uh, does an am amazing job of a prophet into that whole community and beyond. And uh, she turned up in our church last Sunday morning, and I think I'd not seen you for two years maybe, when we were sitting eating breakfast together in Florida, is my memory of when we last seen each other. Uh, and so I'm like, are, are, if you're here for a while, you can preach. So uh, we're just delighted that she said, yes, on her holidays, back visiting family to come and minister to us this morning, <coughs> which is great. Okay, let's jump to our feet this morning. Uh, David and I um, and a few of the others, Sarah Jane included, were building hunting again this week. So uh, good, with some good progress. I don't know that we've quite landed on it yet, but good progress. And uh, uh, you can keep praying for us as uh, every Sunday morning we come in here, we do look at each other and go, oh, you're standing very close to me this morning, aren't you? <laughs> so uh, uh, why don't we just uh, get into pairs this morning and just lay hands on each other. And we just want to pray for each other this morning as we start. However the Lord leads, I just want you to lay hands and then get a sense of how they feel in the spirit and just really bless them. Just speak a word of blessing over them. Go for it. Loose blessing. start to turn our attention towards our Savior. Let's turn our attention towards Jesus. Father, we stand under the waterfall of unmatched grace. We stand under the cascade of your mercy and your kindness. We stand in the place where you saturate us with goodness. We stand as unmerited recipients of the favor and the saving of God. 
We stand in a place today where you wash us clean, you name us your own, you choose us, you raise us up, you appoint us, you commission us. Father, we stand today grateful that we are on a sure footing with you, that you are slow to anger and abiding in love, that your love is dominantly resting on us, that there is no disappointment in your heart for who we are, but this morning there is only unbridled joy as you look upon your own and as you smile. Father, we shake off any other thoughts that say that we're a disappointment or that we're lacking or that we're not enough or that something we have done this week has been a disqualification for you are the God who always wants to meet with your people you are always the God who is running towards and so we stand ready to worship but we stand to receive because you want to cover us in your glory you want to make us sticky with your glory and so we call for your glory to come because your favorite address is my life. Your favorite address is my life. Your favorite address is my life. Shieya soeya mane.
Welcome him in your own heart to press on you. I welcome you, Jesus, to press your weight of glory on me.
I can see the lightning, I can feel the thunder, I can hear the voices proceeding from your throne. Twenty-four elders bowing, casting down their crowns of gold for living creatures crying out. Day
Hallelujah. Thank you, Amanda. How you, how you do that so heavily pregnant, Amanda, I don't know. Your lung space must be a little bit incapacitated. We are going to take our offerings. Woo! <laughs> oh, come on. Every week we have to do double cheer because we're not warmed up enough for the first cheer. It is offering time in the house of God. Woo! <laughs> oh, it's so much fun to give, isn't it? What a joy to be able to sew. Okay, as ever, Samuel, you wave the envelopes high. Uh, just wait a wee moment, Eden, until they've all got one. If you need a gift aid envelope, Samuel will put one in your hand. As we run around. Now, who have we got? You doing it for me this morning? And are you going to do another one? Oh, you're going to do this one. Okay. So do you guys want to go to that side? That lot over there? How Did everybody get a chance to give? Wave at me if you need the bucket. Oh, okay, children, do you want to run that direction with the bucket? We missed a bit. And then children, if you just bring them back down here. Oh, great job. That was your first time. Well done, you. Okay. Thank you, Eden. Thank you, guys. You got it all, Sam. All right, children, you are running after Nicola this morning because Shirley's off on granny duty with the newborn. So Nicola is taking you. Yay for Nicola. <laughs> Chase her down the corridor. Excellent. I think just one announcement, it is our free, another one of our Freedom from Freemasonry days this Saturday and uh, we need all the team we can get and um, who knows already that they're coming as team and has replied, a few of you, anybody uh, not replied, reply to, is it to Nicola? And uh, let's make sure that you get there. If, you've, uh, if you're new to Covenant Family, but you are a member of Covenant Family and you've never done it before, uh, go and talk to Sam and he'll make sure you get buddied up because uh, our hearts is that everybody who's part of us knows how to do deliverance ministry. It is the most fun you could possibly have on a Saturday. And it is true. Uh, uh, the punters always look a bit terrified, but we enjoy ourselves immensely, <laughs> kicking all their demons out. Right. Okay, uh, so uh, make sure that you have either signed up to receive if you've not gone through it before, or if you're Covenant family, uh, then make sure you get yourselves on team. Now, Covenant family is our version of church membership, and if you are not Covenant family and you want to become a member, there are some forms around that you can fill in. Uh, I don't know where they are. 
Okay. Just speak to Nicola. David is saying, just speak to Nicola and you can join Covenant family. Okay, I just wanted to pray before Elizabeth comes. When I was uh, talking to God this morning and I said to him one morning, um, how are you feeling today, God? And he said to me, quite angry. And God doesn't, when he tells me how he feels, that's not often what he says. So I'm like, oh, hang on a minute. God's, why? So it took a, a while and uh, in conversation, and God said to me, because of the unforeseen or unseen captivity of my people. And God started to show me how we did not see our own chains. And this was not just like, oh, you had a little chain around your ankle per you, but you could kind of keep going. This was full-blown straight jackets, a cruelty of captivity, a little bit like you would have seen in an old-fashioned movie in a, uh, a mental asylum, very much that kind of image of uh, totally, utterly imprisoned even on your physical form that had lent, led to a, a real struggle for any breakthrough and any momentum and God was angry and he said my people don't see the level of their own captivity and so I've spent a number of days this week praying around that for me for you for us for uh, us as a ministry that sense of okay God we need to wrestle I think to come into a greater uh, level of personal freedom and corporate freedom and that we get very busy in just the, the rush and the press of everyday life that we're not always assessing our own captivity, but we know sometimes something is just not quite a hundred percent where it needs to be. And so I just want us to sit with our eyes closed this morning. I really felt like uh, the Lord wanted to release the ministry of angels in our midst and that those Hebrews one ministering spirits we're going to come um, with a violence, but with a tenderness of God to start unlocking. And this is not about bringing a key that unlocks a padlock. I actually felt like this was buckles um, and, and old leather straps that were um, uh, around your faces particularly that you could not quite see the strategy, that you could not quite decree what needed to come to pass, that you could not quite move into the place you needed to move into. And I really felt like a number of you I saw in underground like sewage works, uh, like an old Victorian city, like there was a sense of the evilness of the assignments against you were so intense that it was one of those terrifying scenes of real pressing even down uh, into the subterranean levels. So, Jesus, we welcome the ministry of the angelic. We welcome your extended hand to come and unstrap us from where the enemy has straight jacketed us. We welcome your liberty and your freedom. Father, we welcome even your anger as a force on our behalf. That Jesus, you who overturned tables, now overturns a, a, a constriction of the enemy against your people. And so, Father, we welcome you as the force king right now who is standing and ripping and saying I will not have my people in captivity I will not have them bind I will not have not just a limp but a silence and a struggle even uh, reflected in your physical form even in increased exhaustion even in sickness and in distraction that has come to you because of the assignment to keep you stuck. And we decree that the way forward is broken open. We decree that the personal captivity is annihilated right now. And we pull you up even from the place of underground 
bind, restriction, and in the name of Jesus, I decree that you and yours, your family, your houses are now in a place above ground to be able to shift in Jesus' name. Breakthrough and freedom, breakthrough and freedom, and the force of God restoring where you are stuck. So, I decree over you that you are a victorious church arising. I decree over you that you are a victorious family shifting. I decree over you that there are fresh things for your hands to touch that have been out of reach, but we now take the captivity off so that your arm can go to grab it in the name of Jesus. I really felt like there was a let my people go cry. That mosaic, let my people go, let my people go cry. Uh, over the church in Great Britain uh, at the moment, uh, in the British Isles, a let my people go. That the voice of the prophets was to decree, let my people go just as Moses did, that there would be a liberty of the people of God. It doesn't just feel like we're in a battle for the, uh, the nation, right now it feels like we're in a battle for the well-being of the saints and the well-being of the church and so I just speak you are free you are free this is I'm this is warfare this morning I'm not just saying it because it sounds nice to your ears you are free you are free indeed and particularly I feel like there is ownership I release freedom to own, freedom to own what you need to own in Jesus' name. It's not quite completed. Sam or Sarah Jane, anybody want to add to it? I still feel like we're shifting something. We break off ourselves and off the church false identity. We break off that face that is counterfeit in the church. We smash it with our decrees and we say the church is being revealed in her true identity as the ecclesia, the beloved of the living God. And we smash it off. Uh, the church, we smash it off ourselves. We break those masks uh, that are counterfeit and we say the identity of ourselves, the identity of the church is arising. And we pull off you every demonic eye mask and pull out of your ear those demonic earplugs that are stopping you from hearing instruction for the next season and stopping you from seeing your way out and your way forward. And we break the power of that confusion. It's not even just confusion. It is a mask. You cannot see your way forward and you cannot hear the way to get out of where you are right now. We break that now in Jesus' name. And in the name of Jesus, Jesus, I loose to you a clarity of sight and an ease of hearing God's voice that you will hear instruction, but you will also see instruction, that you will hear what God's doing in your life and you will see how you're meant to access it. You will see how you're meant to move forward. You will see how you're meant to possess it in the name of Jesus. And as Emma was describing the um, sewage system, I saw the captives, but not just individuals, 
um, not just each one of us, but the, the, the church and church networks and church denominations and whole church systems were stuck underground and they were thinking that these big Victorian tunnels were the streets that they were supposed to be on. But God is saying, now look for the exits. Come up onto street level. Come up to where it is daylight. Come out of the mud and the mire. Come out of the catacombs where there are only dead people. Come out and step onto the streets where my light is shining and see that I have yet a day for you a new day for you and people have thought that they're in the night and they think that the night is closing in and it is time to go to sleep and I say wake up church and come up to the surface and see that it is daytime that it is daylight and the Lord has worked for you come up church come up come up out of the clay come out uh, up out of the mud come up out of where you have been stuck underground in the sewers come out out of the muck and be washed clean by Jesus we break off our feet. Do you want to stand up? We break off chains that would let us just almost like canter like a horse rather than gallop like the horses were supposed to be in that spirit. Like Elijah ran with the horses. So we break off our feet. We break off our ankles, the chains that keep us in a momentum that is not God's momentum. We smash it. We break it. We say the chain breaker, Jesus himself comes to break shatter not just break off and cut but actually shatter those chains yeah in jesus name we break them we break off ourselves and off the church a chastity belt that would cause us not to be fruitful we unbuckle that in jesus name and even cause us pain when we come to be fruitful we say it is broken and I can see almost like those old-fashioned instruments that some members of the church would wear uh, even now to cause pain like uh, the word what's the word flagellation uh, it, you know it, bringing pain to yourself we pull off ourselves and off the church in the nation anything that causes pain and self-flagellation in Jesus name we unhook that we let it fall to the ground and we say be healed church in the British Isles be healed Healed. And that thing that's on our voices that causes our voices not to be heard, we once and for all take off that belt off our voices and even causing us to have less breath, less oxygen of the Spirit of God, we remove that in Jesus' name. So we speak life back to you. We speak wholeness and energy back to you, church, to your individuals and to your families and to your, your uh, uh, ministries and businesses. We speak wholeness. We speak a Goshen in Egypt. And you know that Goshen in Egypt was the place where the people of God were protected from the plagues. There is a special Goshen anointing where no matter what is happening in the world, there is a blessing of protection for the businesses, the families, and the people of God. So I release, release not just a protection, but a growth. And we speak a greening over you right now, whether you're in school and it's a greening of your minds, or whether it's in business and it's a, a blossoming of your connections, whether it's employment and the doors open, we loose a freedom and a greening even right now in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Have a seat. Elizabeth, come and join us. The last time I heard Elizabeth preach, I was trying to figure it out, was in our last building she came to preach? Yeah, that was years, I, I, was it was it 2013 you last preached here? How remiss of us, a whole six years. Anyway, you're here now. So uh, we're just uh, overjoyed to have such a woman of substance and integrity uh, with us ministering. So please just put your hands together and welcome her. Glory to God. He is good. Hallelujah. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Come on. Let God arise. Let him arise. Where is he going to arise? In us. God Almighty in us. We have 
the fullness of the Godhead in us. And yet, the body of Christ has been like little wimps hiding. But those that know their God and put their trust in him will do great exploits in the earth. Hallelujah. I've just got to touch this. Hallelujah. Honey, you want to come and say something real fast before I get going? I'm like that horse in the stall. I can't stand still. I want to um, claim that I take no responsibility <laughs> in the next hour for what this woman's going to bring forth. This is a place where, I know you're going to misunderstand this, but I don't care anyway. This is a place where I divorce her from an hour <laughs> to let not my wife be, but the prophet to come forth with no restrictions or no control or no judgment or no anything. Um, it's an absolute privilege to be back in Scotland, an absolute privilege to be in this land. Um, I just need to look at the line and my heart starts to um, respond to that. We are in a tremendous season just now in our own lives, We're a tremendous season here in Scotland. And I believe that the Glasgow Prophetic Centre, which has been changed to the, Glasgow, the, the Global, Global, Global Prophetic Alliance, is very, very significant. I get a sense of of it's almost like I'm in amongst royalty today. Um, you might not look upon yourself. There's this row here that starts from the left. All these ladies here. You disturb my peace. <laughs> like a group of warriors who've come on God's time and in God's business to be part of what's taking place here. And I'm sure that they aren't the only warriors here, but as I looked, every single one of them, it seems to be they're all intercessors and warriors. And I thought, my goodness me, the lady that was sitting next to me has got a little book and I thought I'd like to read that book of all the things that are important to the Holy Ghost and what God's been saying to her. So this marriage has been created by God. It's by the grace of God. Um, Elizabeth was in the country, uh, Anne of Arnour at the time. I was working in a, a pastor's house I didn't really speak much to the past. I didn't really speak to other than the fact about business, as in the business of doing the work that I was doing, because my heart was locked up. It was damaged. It was sore. It was all the rest of it. And this pastor was just very, very skillfully and carefully letting me take care of his building, but he knew that I didn't want to talk about anything regarding God. And I remember one of the mornings that I arrived in the house, and I was sitting there speaking to the pastor's wife, having a cup of tea before I started. And... Uh, the door opened to my right hand side so here I am sitting here just having my cup of coffee chatting to the pastor's wife and the door opens over there and I kind of looked around and I took one look and looked back and continued my conversation and in there my heart started to become concerned because my quick glance at Elizabeth uh, I knew that she had something and it was her bible in her hand She'd been sleeping upstairs. She'd got up. She'd been in intercessory prayer all night. I didn't know anything about that. All I knew is when she was standing, she had her Bible open and she had a long white dressing gown on. She was just standing there like a little, at that time when I said like a little demon, but <laughs> I had said that um, she was God's servant, um, but that wasn't where my heart was at. And I'm thinking to myself, oh no, oh no, oh no. <laughs> She's got something for me. Oh, no, oh, no. So I can, kept the conversation going for as long as I could until the pastor's wife says, Hi, I'd like you to meet uh, our guest, Elizabeth. And then she says to me, she had her Bible open. She says, Are you the builder? And I says, I am. She says, I have a word from God for you. <laughs> Never been cornered before. And she delivered the word to me. And I says to her, Do you know, I really appreciate your boldness. Forgive me the word, but I do not like in any way or any form or any shape the word that you're giving to me. Because it was a word and it was calling me to repentance. You see, there was a lot of hurt, there was a lot of rebellion, there was a lot of anger. I'd already walked with God, I was walking close with God. I'd been serving Him, I'd been ministering to the sick, I'd been praying for people. I was a pastor at one time, but I walked away from everything and dismantled everything behind me because of the anger and the hurt and the disappointment. And here God has a sense of humor. He sends this uh, absolutely gorgeous warrior <laughs> um, to Scotland. And 
As I was in the house and I was watching her, she even walked like a scout. You know, when somebody's scouting out the land. <laughs> She's with two, three other, two other Native Americans. And I thought to myself, my goodness, these women are on a mission. These guys are on a mission. They're here. And as I've come to know after eventually years later marrying Elizabeth, um, finding out the, where she's been, what she's done, and she's been in the land for a long time. She's been here before the Glasgow Prophetic Centre was, she was. She was calling things in the land, she was declaring. She's been in more places in Scotland that I have been. She gets access into more places in Scotland that I get access in. She gets favour with the Presbyterian Church, she gets favour with the Catholic Church, she gets favour with lots of different things because of what God has done in her life. So I'm going to wrap this up by saying I am not responsible for what comes in the next hour. I was in a meeting one time and I popped my head in just to have a look and everybody was lying on the floor. Everybody was lying on the floor. It was as if somebody took a shotgun and an AK-47 just went... There was legs up and all sorts of things up. So, hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my wife. I thank you, Father God, for your anointing upon her. I thank you for your, your presence in her life, Father God. I thank you today that we have a special gift in the house today, my wife Elizabeth. And Father God, I know you've called her to, as a prophet to the nations. I know you've selected her. We know we're here on time. We know he, we're here by divine guidance. So as I release her in the name of Jesus, I pray, Father God, for such a heavy anointing upon her that breaks the yoke of the oppressor, breaks the shackles, breaks the chains, Father God, in the lives of men and women in this place. And not only that, in the spirit realm, Father God, there'll be a movement today here in the prophetic center. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody says. One day after Ian and I were married, I said, God, who are we together? You know, I really wanted to know because he divinely put us together. And it's just amazing. He set us up. But I said, who are we together? And you know what he said, Emma? You are shock and awe. There's a double breaker anointing on us. And Ian says, well, who am I? I said, you're the shock and awe, y'all. <laughs> We love ministering together. So I'm just going to share just quickly, really fast here. When God puts a nation in you, he doesn't let you go until you go to that nation and do what he's called you to do. So in 1999, the Lord had given me that psalm, ask of me for the nations of the world for your inheritance. And I said, okay, I'm asking for the nations. And where I came from, I was very quiet. You would not know it now. But see, this is the transformation. If you're around me and I'm just home, you'll see how quiet I am. But I stay consistent in the spirit. And so um, in 1999, I went to a conference. And uh, I was worship dancing there. It was a, a worship uh, convention of just dancers and uh, tambourinists and I got out because they went up to play that song asking me of the nations by Hillsong. So I went to dance with the Lord and suddenly he took me out. Down I went. I could hear my head hit the concrete and instantly I was in the spirit. A door in heaven opened up and I began to hear the sounds of the nations. He says I have a gift. Are you ready for that gift? I said, yes, Father, I'll take the gift. And he says, I'm sending you now. I'm sending you out. And the first nations that I heard coming with the sounds of the land was the Scottish people. And they were in their full regalia. All their tartans and the, and the drums and the pipes and their voices were going out. And it was nation after nation that he, uh, I saw and I heard the sounds of the nations. And in uh, 2002, the Lord sent me here by faith. I had a desire to always come to Scotland. Uh, just that desire. I, I didn't know why. Really, just the de burning desire to come to Scotland. And so, by faith, I'm, we made our plane tickets, and two weeks before, uh, I came with friends, she got a, a contact in Ireland. See, I'm, I'm going to teach you something. You don't have to have a million dollars in the bank. God's economy works different than the economy of the world. See, you've got to believe the word of the Lord. Now, I'm talking to a house of prophets here. You've got to believe the word of the Lord. He's got to work the word in you. 
to bring it out of you. You're either going to believe him or you're going to believe the circumstances. So I, 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 um, by faith we came. Uh, a week before, we didn't have no contacts into Scotland. Somebody handed me finally a, a person's uh, name and number. His name was Crawford Kirkwood. He was in the village of Law. And I called him up, and he says, I asked him if we could come and serve in Scotland. And he says, what took you so long? I've been waiting for you to come. I've been waiting for the Native Americans to come. So he gave, opened up his whole house and his church and fellowship and said, we'll serve you. I'll be gone on, on holiday. I didn't even know what holiday was back then. You know, it was vacation to us. And so I said, OK. So from that time in 2002, when I stepped foot in the land, the Lord began to speak to me. And I felt home. And so. Uh, in 2004, I, I had come twice after that, 2002, 2003. In 2004, I came back, and Crawford said, and Sheila said, don't ever ask to come back. You tell us when the Holy Spirit wants you to come back. And he didn't know that that morning the Holy Spirit says, I, want you to, I don't want you to hit this nation once or twice, but I want you to get in the trenches And he says, I want you to call forth the end time warrior worshipers. And I want you to call forth a company of prophets. He called, call forth the prophets in the land. So I have been in this nation from anywhere from two weeks to six weeks, every three to four months since 2004. And I've been all over this place praying and calling forth the prophets and the apostles, calling forth a prophetic training center. I saw it way in advance. And so I am excited to touch that which was once invisible but was inside of me manifested. So it is an honor because, see, I can celebrate what God is doing. I'm, I'm just one of others. But God had shown me that's what he wanted. And so just I, I have a childlike faith that I just believe. When he says, I believe him, and I go, I do. I've gone through many things that has caused me to be set apart to him. I'm from the Gabrielino Tongba tribe of the greater Los Angeles area. That's my heritage. They were taken over by the Spanish. Many, many people were killed. But see, Los Angeles is a gateway to the nations. I've been mantled by my ancestors. The Lord has mantled me. There was a woman, you, you know Azusa Street. That's a Tongva word. There was a woman in my tribe who, who prayed for the chief who was near death. And she laid hands on him. And guess what? He got healed. And, de and, and delivered and set free. Do you know? And he renamed her. Because she had a name that the Spanish gave her called Comali. He renamed her what came out of her. Azusa means blessed miracle. Sweet waters. Healing. And my favorite of all, light dispelling darkness. Yeah. That's what he experienced. She, what, she, what came out of her is what he experienced. And he named her Azusa, who she demonstrated. Now Christ is in us. The fullness of the Godhead lives and dwells in us. We are to clothe ourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ. See, it's this mind that wants us to reason who we are. Those are the chains and the shackles that are deep down in the seeds that, that the enemy has tried to lie to us that says we're not worthy. We can't do this. We can't do that. Well, who says, whose report are you going to believe? Are you going to believe the report of the Lord and what the word says about you? Are you going to believe the enemy and what people say who are ignorant? They do not know. Because they're walking. People, I've had so many carnal people tell me that I couldn't do this and I couldn't do that. Yeah. They celebrate it when I got the words of prophecy. But when I began to walk it out step by step by faith, yeah. jealousy set in. But see, that doesn't concern me. Because see, 
You are pioneering a new way. A whole group of, of young people that are rising up in the call and destiny that are going to be so radical. Because, see, we need prophets in the earth that will not compromise, that will bring the true word of the Lord. That will bring forth the pure word of the Lord. And so we're going through a process to carry that word. Moses, Exodus. The Lord told me, Elizabeth, I was in the hidden place, not living in Los Angeles because I wasn't raised in our tribal ways. He says, I'm going to send you back to Los Angeles one day to be a deliverer like Moses to not only your people, but from there, the people in Los Angeles, but also to the nations of the world. I was shy, full of anger, full of wounds and pains and thinking that's impossible in poverty all these things was against me who am i that you would send me lord i can't even talk let alone i can't even remember and retain things but i'm just a lover of your word amen but if you said it here i am send me i found that verse in deuteronomy 18 that says here i am isaiah said here i am and the children you have given me, we are for signs and wonders. So, Lord, I'm going to be a sign and wonder, and so are my children, and so will my spiritual children, Lord. I will go where others don't want to go. I will go if you send me. And so he, call, he says, like Moses, I'm going to send you to be a deliverer. Everything looked hard against me. But, see, I had to get the mind of Christ. I had to believe him at his word. When I got a prophecy, I had to speak it into being. Amen. I had to exchange the identity of who the world says I was Amen. and to who he says I am. Amen. Because he upholds all things by the power of the word. Come on. All, things. all things. So when he called Moses, and he, Moses saw that burning bush, mm -hmm. and he had to turn because it was a peculiar sight. Well, some of us are going to be a peculiar sight hey. on the earth. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yes. Woo. See, I know who I am. Amen. I'm a woman under command that does not compromise. And see, God is getting rid of those things that have been deep inside of us and frustrating us and to get us to the place where we'll be so uncomfortable that we will do whatever he wants us to do. Amen. Because people's lives are dependent on us. Yes. And, have, and the release of the spirit, it's not us doing it, but it's him Amen. in us. Amen. But he needs a body. Mm -hmm. He needs an earthen vessel mm -hmm. that he breaks, he crushes, and he rebuilds. Breaks and crushes, and he rebuilds. Yes. We're going to be the restorers. I'm looking at history makers. Amen. That's what you are. That's what you are. You're changing history because you're coming into alignment with the will of God that was been before the foundation of the world, that God already wanted an outpouring here in this land, and it has been laying dormant. It has been laying dormant because of offense, of wounds. I can't do this. I, I don't want to do that. But there came a couple that said, oh, here I am, Lord. I'm just going to do whatever you want me to do. And, Lord, we want to have a school on the prophetic. So we're going to do it. And she says, they said, the pastor said to her, if I'm right, what are you going to call it? She says, Glasgow Prophetic Center. And, it, and, and he said, well, the only part you got is the Glasgow right. But, see, she saw something in the spirit. Because all of the prayers and the cries of the people. See, the Lord came down. He needed a deliverer. And Moses turned at the bush and said, here I am. That's all he asks of you. When he comes to speak to you, just say, here I am. See, we got to be willing to be yielded and available. We want to get all the stuff, A, B, C, and D. It doesn't work like that. It's one step at a time. That's faith. Faith walks on something that you don't see on the outside, but you see it and you know it on the inside. See, I'm going to tell what you to get so when you walk by faith and not by sight. 
that you cause havoc in the enemy's camp, hey, that you hey, bring in the plunder. Because there's plunder that hey. has been left there dormant. And it's time that we take the plunder. Yeah. It's, it's a time that we are arising as the people of God, as sons and daughters of royalty and that he has called us to be. Yeah. Jesus was about his father's business. He yeah. told his parents when they came looking for him, why do you bother me? Why would you come for me? Don't you know I must be about my father's business? That's how single-minded that we're going to be, willing to lay our lives down. It's all for me. There's no turning back. I've seen too much. I know too much. I love him too much to ever turn around in defeat. There is no defeat for me. There is only victory in the blood of Jesus. There's power in the blood. You know, there's going to be places, Emma, I believe in these last days, the Lord told me on the plane, and I'm going to share some of that as soon as I get to Moses. <laughs> <laughs> I love to flow out of the overflow. I, I just love following Holy Spirit because he knows what he's doing. Where was I? <laughs> I got caught up. Oh, the vision on the plane. So the Lord was showing me all the prayers that have been mounting up and mounting up. There's a conversion. He told me, I've summoned you here. And I'm thinking, well, if really, I didn't want to come at first. I love coming home, and I knew it was time, but yet I had other things. But again, I said, okay, I'm going to go, and I knew it was family time. And he told me on the plane of flying over Greenland, he said, I've summoned you to Scotland. It's an appointed time for you. Just rest and trust me. I, didn't, it, I wasn't supposed to look for any ministry or nothing, just rest in him. He says, you were talking about the angels here. See, the word that's inside you, he's watching over that word to perform. So he says, Elizabeth, you don't only have one angel anymore, two angels, three angels. He says, you've got a garrison of angels. Because of the word that I have inside of you that must come out. Yeah. I'm watching over my word to perform it. So all of these years traveling all over in Scotland, the Lord had shown me, and I think it was 2019 after Ian and I just got married, all the work that I had done that people don't know about. Not, it's not about what I've done. It's about being obedient, total surrender and absolute obedience. No matter what your head thinks, Total obedience, I mean, total surrender and absolute obedience. God does wonders. But he showed me, Emma, I was in a lock, and I had been pulling and walking all these years, and there was a rope around my waist, and I was just walking, declaring the word of the Lord, and I didn't know what I was, what was at the other end of that rope. And then all of a sudden, I realized there was this whole big castle that it came down and the foundation had been laid and repaired and built strong for him to do a work. The power of prayer, the power of you releasing the prophetic word, the power of you reading the word. Don't despise your prayer time. Do not despise your worship. Do not despise the prophetic word you're to give, your decrees, because they are making much effect in the realm of the spirit. Yes. We got to know that we know that we're speaking his word and watch him and perform it. That's why I had to touch this. That's why when I came in last week and I just hugged Emma because of the reality of what I've seen out there wasn't for me. I carried you all in my spirit. Yeah. With every step I took, I didn't know your faces. I left my family many times, things that were important for the call of God. We all have to sacrifice some things, and it's worth it because my family was on the altar of God. My life is his. It's not my own. 
And sometimes it was hard. But yet he called me to this land. I love this land. I love this nation. Only to find out, you know, the first Scottish man into the state, into California, before it was California, married a woman in my tribe. His name was Hugh Reed. And he was a voice for my people. And that's why the Lord says, I want you to go be a voice. <laughs> to honor the, the son that came to your shores, that spoke up for your people and sold his riches to feed my people. Okay, Lord. It was just this last year my cousin said, Elizabeth, didn't you know that Victoria Reed was in your grandmother's bloodline? I didn't know that's who he married, a woman named Victoria did not know one because I talked about their love of, you know, for one another and what they did. She was the first native woman to ever hold land in California. So my life has been quite prophetic. And, and then this year I found out that my grandmother did her blood test. She is Scottish, <laughs> Irish, and Welsh Amen. in her native blood. My grandmother's 101. So I know I have an inheritance here in the land. One day we'll live here part time. Wait for that time. So God is, always will call a man or a woman who will say, here I am. Here I am. Because he's raising up many deliverers right where you are. Right where you are. Whether you're a stay-at-home mother, whether you work, whether you do full-time ministry, Whatever you do, he wants to raise up deliverers to the people who are around you. And how will he do it? He will do it by your obedience and action. Amen. He will do it through your voice. Amen. To be a speaker of words uh, that come from him. Yes. Moses says, that was my cry. I said, Lord, I cannot speak. I'm not educated. I've not gone to Bible study, all the things you've called me to do. I, I'm, I'm not, I'm this, I'm not, you know. I have all these kids. I'm unschooled. You know what he did? He put me in the school of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Holy Spirit taught me. After I put all my kids to sleep, I didn't have electricity. I, I had, a, I studied by candles and I would preach to the walls. I would go out and preach to the cows. Because what's in you has got to come out of you. And I'd ask for the nations every day. I'm going. It's not dependent upon my checkbook. Yeah. It's not dependent upon what I know, but you said you're sending me. And he says, you know, when I told him I couldn't speak, he says, all you got to do is open wide your mouth and feel it, and I will feel it. Yeah. And he's been faithful. I eat the word, hours of the word. I love the word. Since I first got saved. And that's what God is saying to us now. Open wide your mouth, and I will feel it. And I'm calling you to go before Pharaoh and say, as she said, let my people go yeah. that they might come out and worship me. Let my people go that they might come out and worship me. And Moses thought, who am I? Because he looked at his station. And he said, the, the word of God in, the, in our Bible says, tell them that I am sent you. But in the original, Art Scrolls Tanakh, it says, tell them, I shall be whom I shall be has sent you. Now that puts a whole other reference on it. It's not just I am. It's I shall be whom I shall be. So whatever that person needs, he shall be. And whatever you need, he shall be that. If you need Jehovah Jireh, he's going to be Jehovah Jireh to you. If you need provision, if you need a shepherd, he's going to be the Lord shepherd. If you need the, the captain of the angel army, he's going to be Lord Sabaoth. Whatever you need at that time, he shall be. He shall come with his name. And you will speak to those pharaohs. You shall speak to those kings. And they will have to bow because he sent Moses as if he was God. That's the kind of authority. He wasn't God. But it was... He was backed up by God. Yeah. It was with God himself. Hallelujah. See, that's the kind of tenacity that we have to have in this hour. Amen. The kind of boldness. Mm -hmm. And get rid of the fear. Because we're not mouse. We're not Mickey Mouse. Yeah. Come on. The Lord, captain of the angel armies, is behind us. Yeah. And we're set to set the captives free. That's why God needs prophets all over the world in this hour. Because we've got a lot of flakiness going on. Yeah. Yeah. That's the truth. God is cleaning up his church. Yes. We need a pure flow, but we need to be willing to be crushed.
crushed and broken. Yeah. Because see, the, the, the hardest crushed olive produces the purest oil. Yeah. So sometimes it takes years. I came to the place where I said, I don't mind waiting. Whatever you need to do, just do it. Because I know I'm going to come out stronger. Turn the fire up. See, when you turn the fire up, that's a bold prayer. But see, I knew that was the safest place to be. And people cry, give me the fire, give me the fire. I want the touch of fire. Well, what are you going to do with the fire? Are you going to let the fire really burn and, and let him be the all-consuming fire in you? Burn up the stuff that needs to be burned up. See, you, you know those three young men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They declared their freedom before it came. Before they walked into that fiery furnace that was turned up seven times, they already said, we're not, we're not going to deal with you. We know God's going to answer us, and he's going to deliver us. We're, we're, we're not going to bow. This is the type of people that I'm talking about that God is looking at, and God is raising up here in this house. You are here on assignment to do a work in this region, and not only this region, but globally to the nations of the world. People are watching you around the world because you are a spearhead. You are at the point of that arrow that is going forth, breaking uh, into destiny, breaking purpose, and you are a, a blueprint for others. Why? Because you're building according to the plan. He showed you, not man's plan. You know that, the, that why the, the, the Nebuchadnezzar had those men stand around them and take those three men out? There was a garrison of a men around them, of the soldiers, because he saw their inner strength. See, they already had royal robes on because they were dignitaries in the land. And do you know what? They didn't exchange their robes when they went in that fire. They could have changed their clothes and put on different clothes. But if they had changed their royal robes, what would have happened? That would have been a sign to the enemy that they came down from their high place. See, what we're building, we ain't coming down. Like Nehemiah on the wall. We're not going to listen to Sam Ballad and Tobiah. We're just going to keep building. We're advancing. We're moving forward because the kingdom of God is being established in the earth. The kingdom of God is within you. When you have the kingdom of God in you, you are armed and dangerous. The first day I got saved, the Lord audibly spoke to me. I've been walking in signs and wonders already, audibly in the supernatural. The very day I first got born, he said, fear not, little sheep, for it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It's your choice. Are you going to receive it and walk in it? Know that it's in you. Because when you get past the fear of who the enemy is and you know who you are in Christ, you're staying seated in your royal place with your royal robes. Hallelujah. 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 It's not by our righteousness, but it's by his righteousness. So they turned that fire up, and those boys, they didn't bow. They fell down, but I believe they were worshiping. They, were, Emma, they weren't even filled with the Spirit of God yet. The, 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 Spirit of, uh, the Holy Spirit hadn't fallen on the earth yet. But they knew their God. They bowed. And it's turned up seven times. But they had that trust in knowing God as who they knew him then. And what happened? Nebuchadnezzar looks and says, oh my, didn't we put four, uh, three men in there? Wasn't there just three? But who was in there? The fourth man. They were walking. I bet you they were doing a Holy Ghost dance. <laughs> through the fire he goes through with you it's a personal walk he walks with you that's why I knew every time the fire came said, so turn it up I asked for it to turn up because Emma I want to be prepared I don't want to come out half-baked because if I come out half-baked the enemy's got access burn it up father burn it up turn it up turn it up I love the fire of his presence see I'm a carrier of the fire of Azusa but see, it's the fire of the all-consuming one who lives yeah. and dwells in me. 
I can't even make myself preach. It's under the unction of the Holy Spirit. Where's Sam? Did he leave here? Okay. I'll get him in a minute. I've got to watch my time here. So what God is doing, he's saying right now, Moses, you're going to be the deliverer to set my people free. Moses saw all his inadequacy, but God had already predestined him to be a deliverer to, you, to many. God has already predestined your, your, your walk in the Lord, your calling. Everything that you have it, when you came to Christ is already on the inside of you. The grace is there. The strength is there. But you've got to pull on it, and you've got to tell your flesh to shut up. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Isaiah 58, 1 says, Cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet. It's time to open wide your mouth and declare the word of the Lord. It says, um, call with, call with a, a full throat. Do not spare like a shofar. Raise your voice and relate to my people their, and relate to my people their transgressions and to the house of Jacob their sins. So it's not only delivering a good word because a prophet has to bring the people into alignment. The prophet is a gift of mercy. He is a gift to the body of Christ to bring the kingdom of God into the manifestation through the power of his word. Because see, we are spirit beings and we are to speak with spirit words. Jesus spoke the word. He says, my word is of a different kind. He says, my words are spirit and they're life. They're eternal. They never pass away. And I tell you, when you begin to speak his word, he, he moves on his word and he does it. I've just been back from Brazil preaching a, cu a couple of weeks over there. And the church is hungry. Amen. They're hungry for pure prophets. They're hungry for the word. They preach for hours over there. They go to church five times a week. Sometimes more. They're hungry. Wow. Yeah. And they pull on the gift. They pull on the yeah. fire. Releasing the fire all over. But see, I know that these feet are his. These hands are his. My mouth is his. He's the all-consuming fire that scatters the enemy. In his mouth are tongues of fire. I've seen him in this land. On the plane. I'm going to go there. Because this is what I'm carrying. On the plane. He began to show me this land and how much he, his eye is on this land and upon his people. And I began to hear the cries of ancient prayers, the cries of the people, the prayers and the tears that were sown in this land years before. From the foundation of time, he began, I began to hear sounds and different things happening, and it was wild. The praise, I could feel heaven and earth converging, and yet I could feel all the weight of these prayers on me and within me. I can't even, that's the only way I can describe what was happening to me on the plane coming here. And he was showing me how he, there's an uprising taking place in this land. Amen. To the true sons and daughters that he's called you to be. To bring this nation to, and to establish the kingdom in this nation. Let me get my little notes here because I don't want to. That he's drawing us to a deeper place. He's called, the deep things of God are in all of us. And he's calling the deep things that are in you that are of him. He's calling them out for this hour. The things that we know not. The Jesus said, it's for you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. It's time that he's revealing mysteries that have been kept for such an hour as this. But he's only going to reveal those mysteries to those that he can trust. We've got to know him. He's coming as the ancient of days. He showed me all of these prayers that the cloud of witnesses that are, are, are joining with our prayers, we're joining with heaven. Yes. There's a convergence taking place. That all of these prayers and all of our obedience is, this is what he told me, it's a seedbed for awakening. That's why we're waking up the church with the word of the Lord. Not by our power, not by our might, but by the word of the Lord. By his spirit. Hallelujah. It's the cloud of witness. We're, we're going to be working more with angels this year than ever before. Amen. I believe, and this has already started to happening to me, 
where I'm preaching and all of a sudden I'm gone. Maria Woodworth Edder would, would be preaching and all of a sudden she'd be in a trance and gone for hours. And people would start having trances. And kids would come back and tell what was happening in heaven. Or they'd be transported. I believe we're in that season. Because that's why the fire, because the word needs to get out. So we're in a point in time. And we must be about the Father's business. Many died not receiving uh, the reward of the promises, but they held on to the end. The baton has been passed. Are we going to take it? The blood is crying out, but this is the seedbed for awakening. What he's doing, he's doing a convergence of the blood. See, I know I have an assignment now to start bringing my native brothers and sisters home. There's many of our native brothers and sisters that have Scottish and Irish blood. And every time I come around, they're crying because they want to come home. But God is bringing the nations together, nations to nations. That's why she's got a global call. That's why this house got a global call. Amen. Aligning the nations before the king of glory. There's been a, a mixture of blood because from one blood, he created all men, giving us our boundaries and territories. But there's a coming together of the faith. And when we can come together, we're stronger. The other night, see, for years I've heard the sounds of the pipes and radical worship here. I can't even describe the, the sounds that I live with, that I hear, and I pray them, and I call them forth. And every time I always find, happen to find a piper. And the other night there was this piper, and I began to weep. And David recognized. And I knew there was something pure, something different coming out of that, those pipes. It was a different sound. I told my husband, I can't hardly stand, but I need to get a picture because this is, it was a pure sound coming. I couldn't even speak to him. I hardly just said, can I get a picture? I was having trouble standing because the weight of the Lord, is, it's in the earth. It's in the earth. It's in the earth. This is why Emma's calling it out, calling it out, calling it out. It's the new sound. Yeah. It's a radical sound. Yeah. As the, the woman of God spoke last week, there's a cadence. Yeah. 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 We're coming into alignment. We're joining shoulder to shoulder. We're not breaking rank, but we're coming forward and we're advancing. See, there's an anointing in our feet to tread down the enemy. We have a treading anointing. In every place we step our feet, we, we take possession of by faith. Yeah. We're taking territory, not only in the natural, but in the spiritual. Yes. Your light has to be awakened to the deep things of God. He's stirring it up. You are going to shine so bright with the glory of the Lord and the weight of his presence. When I was, the, the worship was so radical in Brazil. I mean, that. This pastor in Brazil was only three months. He called him, they called themselves the Free Apostolic Church. And I've never seen a pastor dance and jump and shout. I mean, just radical. And the praise and the drums. I could hardly stand to preach because of the weight of their glory. I mean, I mean, it just and then afterwards I finally gave the word and down I went into heaven. And just releasing the deep things. There's mysteries in you. The deep things of God are in you. Amen. And he's going to bring them out Amen. as you obey his word. Amen. The fire of his presence. Sam, I've been praying for you during the night. And the Lord showed me that you are going to be a prophet. You are a prophet. But you are a prophet of thunder that will bring the voice of the Lord in this land. And not only this land, but other nations. That you are breaking things in pieces. You are breaking up the ground. You are breaking up the hard hearts and bringing them out, in, out of their captivity into freedom through the power of the word that is in you. You are a son of thunder and lightning bringing the truth. And you will raise up others. That even, I see even young, young ones. You will raise them up in this hour and lead a company of prophets. Jesus is tribal. I wore that scarf to remind me 
I got to close here. Because the Lord clothed me on that plane with all the tartans of this nation. There's a Joseph anointing on this house. All those that betrayed you and didn't understand you, you've gone ahead. Moving forward. Yes. Taking territory. Minding your stuff. Not taking offense. Not being hurt. You're just moving forward, Lord. Yes. I'm going to do what you want me to do. And yet, Joseph was revealed before his brothers in a time of famine. Right. They came. The Lord says many will come because they didn't want to hear the prophetic voice because they had been wounded because of the misuse. But many will come and say, will you train me? Will you teach me to hear my voice? A joyous of anointing that God is releasing you to oversee and to bring in the wealth of the kingdom. I hear the Lord say, woman of God, I've covered your feet and anointed your feet to take this land. Son, your feet are anointed. You dip them in the oil of Asher. And the Lord is going to bring you the, the finances to bless others, yeah. to bless the kingdom of God. But you're dipping those, your feet like the tribe of Asher, an Asher anointing that's upon you. I see the orchards. I see, I see things prospering. I see growth in your family. I see a legacy is what I see. Hallelujah. So I just want to release over you. Just lift your hands up. Say, here I am, Lord. Here I am. Fill me to overflowing with your fresh oil. And I say yes to your fire. Consume me, fire. Come and abide in me. Abide in me, consuming fire. Abide in me, fire of God. Hallelujah. Burn away everything that's not necessary. I want to see your burning eyes. Strengthen me in that fire. That I might release that fiery passion and burning love. The Lord is even branding you. He's going deep and branding your spirit. Going deep and branding you and sealing you. You are his. You are his. A container for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the fire of his presence receive it by faith. Be speakers of the word of truth. Spirit words. Spirit words. Eat the word. Eat the word. Eat the word. Eat the word. And watch it come out. Touch his lips with coals of fire. And bring out the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, honey, you've been waiting for this, woman of God. You've been crying out. I would need that fire, Lord. We need that fire. We want to see this nation covered from every village, every town. We want to see the fires of God, of an, an awakening, a praying church, a church that will be free in the spirit of God. We want to see your move, a mighty move across this nation. Let the earth be filled with your glory, oh God, and the fire of God. Oh, Father, we thank you for that fire of your presence. I thank you, Father. That the prayers of the saints that went on before us, we, we say yes, Lord, in agreement to your word that you're bringing alignment. We say yes to the baton and we're going to run the race and finish strong and finish that which you've called us. So I thank you, Father, for each one that I see. The fiery love, passionate believers. Thank you for the gift that they are to the nations and nation to nation. I say, we welcome you to our nation. Your land is our land. Our land is yours. We go, we stand with you. Amen. Amen. Why don't we just stand together?
Father, I thank you that you are marrying nations and that you are marrying the peoples of nations. Hmm. So all of you in this room who are not Scottish born, just raise your hands. If you're not Scottish born, oh my goodness, look at you. We make a space for your flourishing in Scotland. Those of you who are not Scottish born, we make a space for your flourishing that this would be an international house that gathers nations, builds together as one people for the well-being of many nations. And those of you who need grafted in, we graft you in right now, not just to Scotland, but into the heart of the community of the prophets. And there is a binding, there is a belonging, there is a tying together of the international community of burning hearts who shall do mighty exploits in the name of Jesus. There is a new bonding and binding together in the name of Jesus. This will be, the Lord says, an international house as a sign and a wonder. The Lord says this will be a place of the culture of heaven because heaven is multinational. Heaven is international. So we make a space for the foreigner. We make a space for the immigrant. We make a space and we say you will be planted and you will flourish in this land. Yes, David, you're Scottish. You need to bless them. There's something really strong about the gathering of the nation. Scottish father. Father God, we give thanks for those who have come, whether they've come kicking or, and screaming or whether they've come pushed by you, God, or whether they've come more willingly than that. We give thanks to those that you have sent for such a time as this. And I welcome, on behalf of the nation, on behalf of the church in this land um, that has sown and that has sent, but now is in great need of kingdom warriors, we welcome those of you who are called to this place, even those of you who are only here for a time, we uh, link our arms with you, we drink from that quake of friendship with you, and we say we are part of a forever family. But I bless you from, um, as a father in this land, as a, a Scottish father, I bless you with the Father's blessing in the name of our Father who is in heaven. Hallelujah, Jesus. And Elizabeth and, and Ian, I just saw a small holding of land open up for you in America. Uh, first, I saw a new level of home ownership and land ownership in the States. And, it, and the Lord says it's a small holding. And I saw you uh, as farmers who would actually have a stake in the land. Uh, and there, was, there were animals, uh, there were chickens and cows and goats. Uh, and you were going out and you were feeding them. And there was a care of the land. And the Lord says, what you have in the States, I will replicate for you in this nation. I actually believe there's a call in you to France as well. Uh, have you been on the, on the soil of France yet? Uh, not yet, but I felt like there was going to be properties in three nations ultimately, America and Scotland, and I felt there was going to be a retreat, uh, um, a healing retreat in France uh, where there would be sunshine and that you would start to heal some of the Huguenots in France who had been dispossessed from their inheritance in the land. And the Lord says, you're not just for the first nations in America, you're for the first peoples even in the ancient kingdoms of Europe, says the Lord. And so we just release to you the land that God has called you to for ownership in three different nations. 
uh, ownership. There is even a release of funds to come for ownership of land. And we loose that to you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Why don't you give somebody a big hug? Say, I'm glad I got to sit near you. You're so gorgeous. You're so gorgeous. You're so gorgeous. And we'll see you next week.